My name is Connie Ree, and I'm an assistant professor of medicine and public health at the University of California, Irvine. I'll be presenting to you our original research article on thyroid status and death risk in U.S. veterans with chronic kidney disease that will be appearing in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. As background, thyroid dysfunction is a highly prevalent yet underrecognized endocrine complication affecting a large proportion of non-dialysis-dependent CKD patients. Data from the third National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey has shown an increasingly higher prevalence of hypothyroidism with incrementally impaired EGFR. More recently, in a study of over 460,000 U.S. veterans with stage 3 to 5 CKD, for every 10-point decrement in EGFR, there was an 18% higher risk of hypothyroidism. In studies of ESRD patients, a similarly high prevalence of hypothyroidism has also been observed. In the general population, adverse cardiovascular sequelae may result from untreated hypo and hyperthyroidism. And this high burden of thyroid dysfunction in kidney disease patients may have an important bearing on their survival, even if they suffer from a disproportionately higher cardiovascular risk. Indeed, a growing body of evidence shows that hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism are associated with higher mortality in dialysis patients. Thus, our research objective was to address the following question. Given that non-dialysis-dependent CKD patients have a disproportionately higher prevalence of thyroid dysfunction compared with their non-CKD counterparts, what is the association between thyroid status defined by serum TSH levels and mortality among a national cohort of patients with non-dialysis-dependent CKD in a large longitudinal cohort of 227,426 U.S. veterans with stage 3 to 5 CKD and repeated measures of serum TSH over 2004 to 2012, we found that 6.4%, 90%, and 3.4% had hypothyroidism, euthyroidism, and hyperthyroidism, respectively. In both baseline and time-dependent analyses adjusted for expanded case mix covariates, we observed that TSH levels of greater than 5 and less than 0.5 were each associated with higher death risk. And in analyses that more granularly examined TSH levels, baseline and time-dependent TSH levels of greater than or equal to 3 were associated with increasingly higher death risk in expanded case mix models. We also observed that TSH levels of less than 0.5 were associated with higher death risk after accounting for expanded case mix covariates. In sensitivity analyses that examine baseline and time-dependent TSH as a continuous predictor of mortality using restricted cubic splines, we observed a U-shaped association between TSH and mortality with a nadir of risk at a TSH range of 1.7 to 2.1. And in analyses that concurrently examine thyroid status, thyroid medication use, and all-cause mortality, we observed that presumed untreated and undertreated hypothyroidism and untreated hyperthyroidism were associated with higher mortality, whereas hypothyroidism treated to target was associated with similar to slightly decreased mortality risk. In terms of the takeaway messages that can inform clinical practice and the care of patients, among a large national cohort of U.S. veterans with stage 3 CKD, granular examination of thyroid status showed that TSH levels in the high normal and hyperthyroid ranges were independently associated with higher mortality risk. Untreated and undertreated hypothyroidism and untreated hyperthyroidism were each associated with higher mortality risk, whereas hypothyroidism treated to target had similar to slightly lower mortality risk. At this time, further studies are needed to determine the specific mechanistic pathways linking thyroid perturbations and death in this population, and future interventional studies identifying the target TSH range associated with a greater survival in patients with non-dialysis-dependent CKB are warranted. I'd like to pay acknowledgement to our funding sources, which include the NIH, American Thyroid Association, and National Kidney Foundation, and also to Mayo Clinic Proceedings. We hope you enjoy our study. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter.
More information about health care at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.